Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about my experience in a psych ward. And this isn't supposed to be something of a motivational or uh, dramatic video. I'm just talking about what my experience was in a psych ward called Bridgeway. Doing a vlog. Hello guys, welcome back to Jerry's World. My name is Jared, as you can tell by the tag that pops up right there in every single video. Kinda in every single video. And, uh, yeah, I got new shades again, because I can. They were only a dollar, you know, of course, cheap kind, from, uh, Dollar Tree, because Dollar Tree's awesome. Come on. But, now, let's just get to the whole psych ward thing. I went to a psych ward called, called Bridgeway, and, uh, well, it was here in Arkansas in Little Rock. I, I went to Little Rock um, called to a psych ward called Bridgeway and there's actually reasons that um, I'd like to go more deeper into it other than that one video that I made a couple of months ago called why I was gone for so long it's kinda like that but I go more into detail about it now uh, let's go ahead and get to the reasons I went there so I've, I've made a video before, a long time ago, about how I hate dogs. Literally, I like, I hate dogs. I do not like them. I mean, I do like Huskies, or, um, I like Huskies, Great Danes, you know, the bigger dogs, basically, but small ones like Pomeranians, or Chihuahuas, which we don't have Chihuahuas, we just have Pomeranians, I don't like them very well. And, of course, I live with them. They're not mine, they're my parents and my sisters. And I don't like them one bit because they're, they're yappy all the time and they're always at the end of your feet. Yes, you have cats that do that, but the cats are more out of your way than these ones are. Our cats are more out of the way than the dogs are in our house. The dogs are always underfoot and they still are underfoot all the time. And uh, it's kind of ridiculous. That is what made me... Um, so angry and I went there because of anger I went there for probably about uh, say about 60 wait I want to say about 80% anger 20% depression uh, the anger was slowly rising up pretty darn high it was slowly getting up there um, and the dogs weren't helping and neither was school. I, I wouldn't get mad at really too many people at school. I would get mad at myself. Because I've always felt like I was completely worthless. I, not at doing things like math, you know, geometry stuff. Which is, I was in the middle of doing geometry whenever I went there. When I was in 10th grade. Um, I felt worthless because I wasn't good at that. And, uh, and all the other things. So... I felt bad. It wasn't anybody causing me to feel that way. It was me. I always felt worthless. I, I wasn't smart enough to do it. I wasn't good enough to do it. So I was basically a piece of trash. That's what I thought about myself. And just thinking about that, I would make myself angry. And then there's the people at school that were commonly annoying because, well, they're the spoiled kids with parents that get a lot of money. And so the kids get anything that they want, such as the iPhone 7 Plus whenever it first came out, which... Um, the, this was in ninth grade, but um, whenever the iPhone 7 Plus first came out, so many kids there with rich parents already had the iPhone 7 Plus. That's not what made me mad. What made me mad is how these kids would rub it in your face and be like, oh, well, I'm better than you. And these kids aren't like shove you into a locker or uh, be emotionally or verbally abusive towards you. They, they would just rub it in your face, basically. That how they were better than you. When really, they were just not better than you at all. Like, they were the worst kind of people, and nobody really liked them. Uh, these kids were horrible. And, and of course, you know, they haven't changed at all, but... Uh, thing is, is, did I try to fight any of them? No, of course not. Of course I wouldn't. I'm not a person that would try to fight anybody. What I would do, is I would get silent and walk away. But that doesn't mean I didn't feel the anger. The anger 
never was released, and it slowly built up, like applying air into a bottle with an air pump or something. Slowly applying the air into a bottle. Sooner or later, it's going to explode. It's kind of like that. Or applying more weight to a seesaw. Like slowly, one side is going to go down, and the other side is going to go up. And it was like that. That's how I told my psychiatrist in case. That's what I told my psychiatrist and caseworker. Is mine's my anger is like a seesaw. At the moment, when I was fixing to go to Bridgeway, it was at 50-50, so it was balancing between my normal emotions and my anger. And the anger was slowly getting heavier, so it was slowly going down. And that was the problem. And that's whenever he decided, all right, well, before anything happens, this is your, this is your choice. And let's go ahead and get to that, the choices I had. Now, my options that I had were either see her more than my psychiatrist more than once a week or go to Bridgeway, the psych ward. It was one of them two. And I picked see her more than once a week. And during that time, my caseworker told me to, I think it might have been my caseworker that told me this. It might have been my psychiatrist, I don't, I don't know. Uh, one of them told me to think of the dogs like toddlers. And then I then I told her, I don't want to think of them as toddlers because then I'm going to want to kick a toddler. And then she was like, alright, so that backfired. <laughs> um, yeah, it it wasn't a good idea because I don't want to feel like kicking a toddler. I really don't. I'm not a violent person. I'm really not. Even back then, I was never a violent person, but it was getting to the point where I almost was a violent person. And I don't want, I, I don't want that to happen. And I'm not much, I'm not much for violence. Yes, I love horror movies. I really do. Heck, I write horror scripts, you know, screenplays. I, I love horror, but I cannot stand real life violence. I mean, I just got, before I came out here into this video, I just got done watching The World's Dumbest Criminals, so there was stupid people getting tased, but that doesn't bother me because these people deserve it. If it's something towards somebody that's innocent, then I can't stand it if it's real life. And that was the thing, is in Bridgeway there was some of that, but uh, somebody was just being, you know, stupid. Not really stupid, just getting violent, but, uh, so after a while, the whole seeing her for, this happened just for a week. This was going on for a week. Uh, the seeing her more than once a week was just happened for a week. I told her either... I told her that I want to go ahead and see you for more than once a week, and if that doesn't work, I can go to Bridgeway. And she wanted me to go to Bridgeway to get that cleaned up and, you know, my emotions, you know, cleaned up and all that. And, you know, and it was actually a choice that I was, you know, somewhat accepting. And, because I knew that it would definitely help. And yes, I was scared to go there. I really was. I didn't know what was going to happen there. I didn't know if someone was going to get really violent or psychopathic and try to hurt me or you know, something like that. I was scared to go there, but I knew it was probably a good choice. It was better. And But this went on for a week, and my emotions hadn't changed. And then that's whenever she brought up that I'm probably going to have to go. Now, the day that she told me I had to go, it, it was a Friday. And we went there in the morning. And... I should also mention that during this time, I was, uh, you guys never seen this on my videos. You've never seen it any of, on my videos. But the thing is, is during all that time, I, uh, we were doing renovations on our house. Um, my previous video before I went to Bridgeway was, uh, I think renovation vlogs, uh, talking about renovation vlogs, but that didn't go on too long. Actually, it didn't go on at all, um, but the previous night before I went to Bridgeway, I was, uh, we were tearing down some walls, and the psychiatrist did not like that, because she was like, well, what if you get angry, and then I could start hurting people, and then I was like, I, I felt like she was trying to take that away from me, but, uh, you know, it was probably for the best, now that I think about it now, but the thing is, is before I went there, I should say that I was starting to get a little violent, 
something would mildly piss me off and I would start throwing things like a cup one of the um, dogs would start barking outside and I would just throw a cup for no reason I would just start throwing things did I hurt anybody did I hurt any of the dogs of course not I you know didn't hurt them I'm looking over there because my stepfather came outside I'm guessing he's up because you know he has to work tonight and I'm sure he's not happy about that but um, did I hurt anybody? Did I hurt any of the dogs? No. Um, it almost came close to whenever I threw a cup one time. Uh, it almost hit mom. And, of course, I felt pretty bad after that. I am I am one that if I almost hurt someone, or actually do hurt someone, I feel very remorseful for it. Even if I am very angry, the anger just quickly fades away, and I felt horrible. And that was whenever I started deciding, okay, so maybe I should go to Bridgeway. But then... She started, my psychiatrist knew about it, and she, I came in there before school even started. It was pretty early, sometime around 7 o'clock. I went there, and she was like, and she, she was like pretty quiet. And she looked at me, and I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was pretty calm. And I could tell that she was worried. And, um, and I was pretty scared, because I knew what was going on. I knew that she was going to say, all right, you have to go to Bridgeway. And I told her. Yeah, I could go ahead and go to Bridgeway because if this isn't hap if this isn't working, then I said that if it didn't work, then we can do that. You could go. I could go to Bridgeway. And so she talked to me. She talked to Mom. We were sitting out there in the I guess it's a waiting room. Uh, it was behavioral health. Um, and Mom was like, she looked over at me and she was like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And I was like. It's too late, I kind of have to now. And I could hear her and they're making the call to Bridgeway and all that. And man, I feel like I was going to be sick. I didn't get sick, but I feel like it because I was so nervous. I was so scared because I've never been to a psych ward before. I've heard bad stories about psych wards before and I did not want to go there at all. Like, I really didn't want to go there. So... <laughs> Yeah, I was pretty nervous, and I'm starting to get that feeling now. Now that I'm starting to look back on it and remember it, just doing this video, I'm starting to remember that feeling I had sitting out there, knowing that I'm gonna be gone for a while. Now, I was only gone for a week, so I hadn't been. I was. Um, it was just a week I was going there. Most people just go there for a week. Most people, and they're you know fine after that, unless they go to long term, but. I, I wasn't going to long term, obviously. I didn't go to long term. I was I was just there for a week. And uh so then she told me, So you have to bring three pairs of socks, three pairs of pants, three pairs of shirts. Just in threes. Everything in threes. You can you can bring your own toothbrush, they have them there, but you can bring your own, your own well actually I didn't bring my own toothpaste, I think. I don't remember. I don't remember if I brought my own toothpaste. I don't think I did. But I did bring my own toothbrush. Um, because I didn't want anybody else using it. And then that is when our trip started. I think it was about a two hour trip. I don't know how long it was. But that's when it started. And when we got there. Uh, of course we were having some uh, problems trying to find the correct place to go to. Because we were like... Alright, so where are we going? We knew what road it was, because the road was literally the name of the place, Bridgeway. We just didn't know what building to go to, so we had fun with that. We went up there, we were waiting for an hour in that lobby, before someone called us back, and, you know, was like, alright, so, so we need to know if you take any meds, you know, all that stuff. Just, you know, they need they need to know that, which is understandable, they, need, they actually need to know that. And, uh... So, there's that. Uh, then after that, uh, we we went outside, and of course me and this woman, I can't remember her name, I actually never really knew her name, I think, I don't know. Uh, oh, she walked me over to the building, which is where I would be at, and, uh, and of course I said my goodbyes to mom and my stepfather, and I could feel that I the nervousness just got worse and worse and like I said I'd, I'd never got sick at any time but the nervousness just 
got worse and worse seeing my mom and stepfather like you know slowly disappear behind all the cars and all that knowing that I would not see them for a while and it was really starting to hurt but uh but I'm not sure if anybody is knows that they have to go to a psych ward anytime soon don't worry it you know thing is, is it's not as scary as you would think it is it really isn't but watch the video to know watch the rest of the video to know uh what exactly it's like because i'm going to go on with that it's not but i'm just right now i'm going to tell you that it is not as scary as you'd think it's not as scary as i'm making it out to be it's really not uh like i thing is i didn't know this at the time so i was freaking nervous as heck you will be nervous going there um Maybe, I don't know, if you're, if you're uh, very, very unremorseful and, you know, don't have any emotion, you, know, you won't be nervous, but most people have emotion and are pretty nervous going there. But I was nervous, and then, then I started to get dizzy, not because of my nervousness, but because we had to go down a flight of stairs, which was a swirl, and that's why I got dizzy. I was like, all right, I gotta hold on to this, and, he was like, and she was like, yeah, a lot of people get dizzy on the staircase. No, she was super nice, you know, every, everybody there, the whole staff, nurses, they were all super nice, you know, they weren't all, you know, alright, get up scum, you know, they, they weren't like that, they were, they were actually all pretty nice as long as you were nice to them, you know, uh, if you were mean to them, uh, then they would be a whole lot worse, I've never done that, but I have seen other kids that were mean to the staff, and they got chewed out very bad, scared the crap out of me. But, you know, but then I went up there to the front desk, which is in the big, big hallway. So, the front desk, since it's, you know, where the, the kids are, the adolescents at least, um, teenagers and all that. Front desk, we walked in through the door, there's a front desk over here, uh, there's a hallway going down there, and then there's a the corner right here, um, and there's some bedrooms on this side of the wall, and straight ahead is the day room. But I went over there to the other side of the front desk and just sat there until they had to take my vitals like temperature uh, the thing that they put on your the blood pressure blood pressure is what I'm saying uh, they had to take all that stuff and make sure everything was fine ask if I had to take meds there was this one there was this one guy um, he was he was asking me all those questions and then here comes the worst parts ever the check no not money check not that where you have to basically strip down to your underwear and they have to check you for scars that was the worst part of going there you have to be very you have to be uh, you have to know that they will do that you can't just be not expecting that they you have to take your clothes off except for your underwear obviously but you have to take your clothes off and you know you have to get the check and all that uh, it, I was so scared. I was so nervous. I've never been very. Uh, I I'm not comfortable. I wasn't comfortable with my body at the time. Uh, I'm still not. I still have a little bit of weight to lose. I really do. But I've actually lost a little bit of weight. I've I've lost 20 in the past few months. Uh, I was at 180 something, close to 190, and I've dropped down. Last time I checked was 163. Uh, thankfully, I've dropped down, so I guess it was almost 30 pounds I've dropped, but it was just in the 20s. But I've never been comfortable with my body, and then there was that. Yes, they let you keep your underwear on. Don't don't freak out. If you're a girl, I'm pretty sure they'll keep. You have to keep your bra on, obviously. Uh, of course, I had some cuts on me, obviously on my legs and all that. And it was like, where are those? I was like, ah, we were taking down our fence in the yard, and it was some barbed wire, which is the truth, you know. With our fence in the yard, we were taking it down, and there was barbed wire. I got cut on it sometimes, and we were taking down some of the stuff in the house. I'll get cut on it. That's the truth. I told him the truth, because that's where the cuts came from. It really is. Some of my arms too, but yeah. Uh, he asked if right here was a rash and right here and I was like no I just have acne on my shoulders which I do sometimes you guys will see my videos and I'll have uh, some pimples on my face and all that uh, you think that's bad look at my arms it's bad not real bad actually not as bad as it used to be it's actually clearing up
but that was on that was over that was over thankfully he was like all right you can put your clothes back on there was a there was another woman in there with us um but she had her back turned which that made things a lot better and that fly bear got off to the camera or else i'm gonna flip it off out flip it off yeah i'm gonna flip it off doing um i'm not gonna actually flip it off uh, it's actually a phone not a camera uh he said, all right, you can put your clothes back on. And boy, I have never put put my clothes on fast before. It was... <laughs> I was scared to death. I, I was nervous. So you have, you have to be careful to check. Um, no, they're not going to do pat-downs or anything. Uh, honestly, a pat-down would have been whole much, a whole lot better. But dang it, get off got the phone. Uh, that would have been much better, but, you know... Obviously, there's the reason why they have to do the check like that, you know, check for cuts and all that. Um, and I got that done, and I, it, there was nobody else around, like any of the other kids. There was nobody else around, or any of the, the nurses were at the nurses station, but the staff themselves, they were all, everybody was in the lunchroom because the, I arrived at supper time and. I, I didn't go into the lunchroom, I just went into the day room, sat there, and, uh, and I met this one girl, she came in, and she asked me who I was, and why I'm here, and, uh, of course, I'm not gonna say anybody's name, I'm not gonna say anyone's name, because they probably just don't want their name, sorry, I was trying to look at the screen, uh, they probably just, uh, don't want their name said on camera, which is fine. I'm not going to say their name or anything. Uh, she was asking me why I was there and all that. It's from what I remember. Um, but uh, she ha she was there long before I was there. I don't think she was in there for long term because if she was there long term, then she would be on a totally different hallway and she wouldn't be in that day room. Uh, there's there was a different hallway for long term, which looked a whole lot more comfortable long term I would have loved to have been on long term but actually I take that back I love to have been in the hallway is what I should say <laughs> I don't want to go there forever I you know I want to just be if I was there I would have been in that hallway oh man <laughs> no I don't want to go there for months I, I'm glad I stayed there for a week <sighs> yeah I was there just for a week I'm, what I was saying is I'd rather been on that hallway than the other hallways because that one looks so much better. It didn't smell better at all. It did not smell good at all. It was it, The smell was pretty bad. Um, I would say it smelled a whole lot better than death, but it was pretty close. Uh, imagine death took a crap on a zombie, and, you know, then that would be the smell. Just, you know, minus... It was a sm sour smell, a sour and bitter smell is what I'm saying, and it was strong too. And it was bad. But then, I was waiting in the day room, and then the adolescents, all the other kids that are around my age, came in and sat down. I was there in the corner. I moved to the one side of the room because males and females are supposed to be separated, separate. And uh, I, I went to the corner. I was just sitting there nervously, all the other kids were talking to themselves like they were friends for years and all that. They were friends, like, talking like they were friends forever. And, uh, ow. There we go. Ah, there we go. That was nice. Um, and of course, I was the only one that was really silent. Uh, and then it slowly started to get dark in there, and I don't remember much after that. Um, it slowly started to get dark in there, and then that's whenever... Some would talk to me. Um, the girls started talking to me first. Did I look like a girl at the time? No, of course not. They knew I was a guy, obviously. Um, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, the reason why I say that is because they actually knew I was a guy. They actually knew it. And then, you guys aren't gonna. You guys aren't gonna believe me. You guys aren't gonna believe me one bit. Because honestly, nobody has said this to me. Um, nobody ever, ever has said this to me, but, um, we, one of the girls was asking me questions and all that, and another one, and, uh, 
uh, that kind of did this, and she was like, has anybody ever told you that you're really attractive? And I was like, no. <laughs> I said no, because nobody has told me that. And I was, that is what made the nervousness kind of worse. And like I said, you guys won't believe me, but it's what made the nervousness worse is, uh, not, not, it's not really her, it's just the fact that I was kind of like, that came out of nowhere. And of course, I wasn't dating anybody at the time, I'm still not dating anyone. Um, I actually was a little bit ago, uh, not, uh, a couple of weeks ago, but there were some problems that, uh, so it didn't work out. Um, it was someone that I had been with already, and I'm not a big fan of getting with people that I've already been with and broke up with, but this one, I couldn't, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, no, I do not get into all the teenage relationship dramas. I stay away from that. If somebody tries to bring it towards me, I'm like, nope. No, not really. Uh, uh, if if you guys see me do that, I mean, uh, you know, pretend like this one right here is my middle finger. <laughs> I cannot raise this finger very well. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm doing this finger right here. Yes, I'm wearing these. Why? Because I can. You know, if you don't like it, screw you. But she she it it it's, she she didn't make me nervous. It's just the fact that it came out of nowhere and the fact that nobody has ever told me that. Uh, that told me that and I was like no nobody's told me that nobody's told me that before he was like well you are and I was like yeah okay and oh man <laughs> it just and then and then uh we went into this uh room I think it was yeah it was called I think it might have been a multi-purpose room um which we only, we've only been in there, I was in there once at least, um, I don't know about anybody else that was there, but I was in there once, uh, basically, and, uh, it's a big room with a television, we went into the multi-purpose room to watch a movie, we watched a movie every single night there, it's not, don't worry, places like that, it's not, uh, you have to just sit in your room, and stare at a wall or, you know, stare at the ceiling laying back on your bed. No, no, no. You actually do have a bit of freedom. You get to watch movies. You get to have snacks. You actually get to go outside in the courtyard. You know, it's not all boring stuff like the movies say it is, you know. Don't believe the movies when it comes to a psych ward unless, you know, it's probably a psych, a psych ward for psychopathic people. Um, you know, the state penitentiary or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I didn't go to the state penitentiary or whatever it is. Or, is, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I just went to a psych ward. Uh, for a week, um, but we went there to the multi-purpose room, watched a movie called Norbit, you know, the Norbit movie, and I have to say that movie's probably going to be ruined for me, I've only seen it once and that was there, but I actually want to see it again, but the problem with it is whenever I watch it, I'm going to get, just thinking about the movie it will probably give me the same nervousness I had on my first day there course that's uh, in that room or part way through the movie some of the kids would get phone calls which every night you were allowed phone calls with your parents you couldn't make the phone calls you weren't ever allowed to make phone calls somebody had to call you around uh closer to nighttime um uh, my mom called sometime around nine and of course i was on the phone it was hard to hold back tears but i did because uh, i was like i said i was scared i was nervous but, uh, which it'll ha definitely happen to people, being scared and nervous. I was there, and we talk about how we already missed each other and all that, and hung out, watched the rest of the movie. And, of course, you know, I remembered I had got this cup earlier, this cup with an orange lid. You had to go pee in it, and that was one of the things I was like, ah, dang it, I hate doing that. I hate peeing in cups, dang it. Really? I do not like that. <laughs> but, there's that, and, uh, so I remember that. I was like, all right. So I think I could do this now. So um, when we went back, it was shower time, basically. I did not like taking showers there. Why? Because the, the shower rooms were, there were many shower rooms on each hallway. And they were very small. Claustrophobia? 
No, it was just hard to get around in there. And you best hope that you get one with a chair in it. <laughs> yeah, you better hope that you get a shower room with a chair in it. And, uh... And definitely not the one at the very end of the hallway, because the one at the very end of the hallway can barely fit a chair in it. I mean, you could fit a chair in there, it'd just be hard to get around. Uh, but I went there, I went to the bathroom at the end of the hallway, and then I looked and I was like, oh, people do not know how to flush a toilet. Because <laughs> the gagging part was when the smell hit. Because I guess people didn't know how to flush a toilet. I went, pushed the button to flush the toilet. It was a button, not a handle thing. It was a button. It didn't flush. It just did nothing. I was like, oh, freaking crap. So I made it quick. Peed in the cup, brought it there to the to the nurse's station, you know, they took it and all that, and also every night, I s every night I took melatonin to go to bed, because I've been taking melatonin, you know, to go to bed, because uh, I do not have a very good sleep wake cycle, it doesn't stay on track at least, but, so, there's that first day, F falling asleep, since I took the uh, meds, uh, the, the uh, melatonin, it, falling asleep wasn't a problem at all. It really wasn't a problem. Uh, it, it it was like take the med, go to falling asleep. Just wasn't a problem with it. I just went in there, laid down, and I don't even remember closing my eyes. It was just staring up there at the um. I last thing I remember seeing that night before I fell asleep was looking at the door and looking at the number on the door. I think it was three o six. Um, it was the first room on the hallway, I believe. Um, it was 306. I remember looking at that, and then it just blanked out. And then I got up right before they came around and woke you up for, uh, like at 7, just to get up and get your vitals done and brush your teeth and get your hygiene. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, all that. You have to wake up and get all that stuff done. Uh, and then we go into uh, that the first day. Uh, uh, we went to the lunchroom for breakfast. And that was the first time I was ever in there for actual breakfast. After that, we all seemed to just resort to the day room for some reason. I don't know what happened. Um, we just went to the day room. And that's whenever I kind of started to meet everybody, I guess. Uh, and... One of the one of the kids there, um, one of the kids there. It was like, wait, how are you? How are you in the? I didn't ask him this, but I was kind of questioning him in my head. How are you in the kids' ward, the adolescence? You you look eighteen. He was fifteen, fifteen, and probably about six four. And he had a full beard. He looked like an 18 year old or older. And I was like, how does this happen? <laughs> um, and other and the other kids kind of said that too. And then there was the other kid. Um, he was 13, but he looked nine. Uh, but you know, all of them were very easy to get along with. Everybody there was easy to get along with. Just everybody. Um, and none of them were complete uh, none of them, none of them were really there too much for anger except for the little kids i noticed that the little kids were there for anger a lot of them at least um but you know most of the adolescents there were there for uh depression most of them um suicidal tendencies whatever i was there for anger mostly and whenever i said that I was there for anger. Um, I got a few weird looks because most people were like, you don't even look like a person that would be angry. Because, you know, most people say that I don't ever look like someone that would get angry easy because I don't get angry easy. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't get angry and try to fight people is what I'm saying. People are like, you don't look like an angry person. And I was like, uh, dogs dogs i live with pomeranians i hate pomeranians and that's what you know caused me to almost explode and possibly almost kill them literally i had thoughts on killing the dogs it was getting to that point um except for one of them 
uh, except for one of the dogs. That one. It, and he's not he's not a, a Pomeranian, he's a Papillon. He's the same size as a Pomeranian, but he is chilled, laid back, and, you know, house broke. Finally. Um, back then, he definitely made me mad back then, whenever he just would not learn after a year of having him to, you know, actually a couple of years of having him to either use a puppy pad or go outside, but, you know, he never learned. And now he finally learned. So he, he's the only one that uh, I can, you know, you know, be around and not get mad. But, uh, so there's that. Um, that's all I can remember of the second, well, actually the second day. Second day it was either lunch or dinner, supper, whatever. I don't know. I was in there. I didn't eat anything. I grabbed the tray, but I didn't eat anything. Um, I was sitting there in the lunchroom, and that's whenever the tears almost hit. That's whenever the, you know, depression hit. Um, I was sitting there just doing this. I, I didn't shed any tears or anything, but, you know, one of them definitely did notice that my eyes were red. You know, people's eyes are generally red before, you know, before they start crying. I didn't start crying at all, you know. I didn't cry any time that day or any other days. I was sitting there like this. My hand was probably a little shaking and and uh it was like we understand we understand uh something like that um, and you know after that it was i slowly started to calm down and get chill because i reminded myself you're only here for a week nothing bad it's just you're here for a week and nothing bad is going to happen all right, so I've went on with two days, uh, two days being there. I'm gonna make this more more than one part series of what it's like in Bridgeway. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here because I'm pretty sure the phone is losing uh, some memory pretty quickly because these videos are decently long now. Um, I'm pretty sure this video is gonna be decently long. And so it's going to process a lot slower. And the editor, it's not the editor's fault, it's the computer's. And it's like, why? You stupid computer, I will blow you up. I will break you into little pieces and then break those little pieces and the little pieces and break those little pieces that were broken into pieces into even more little pieces. I will make sure you do not exist anymore. I will make each individual piece of you smaller than a speck of dust. That's the problem with the computer. <laughs> I will probably do that when I get a desktop. Ah, <coughs> oh, there we go. That did not taste good. <sighs> that did not taste good at all. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. And, uh, so. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Whatever you guys want to think, do the same thing for the other account, Jezreel Reactions and The Grim. I messed that up in the last video and I said Jezreel Podcast, which I still have to get used to. Visit the website at jsuc.weebly.com, jaredjackson.weebly.com, and grimstories.weebly.com. I'll put those down in the description below. You can go see them there. See you guys in the next video, possibly whenever I keep talking about what it's like in a psych ward, or, uh, you know, Bridgeway, or whenever I just do something. I, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. See you guys in that next video. Because that next video is definitely coming. And uh, a whole lot more videos are definitely coming in the future. I plan on keeping this channel for years to come. So, keep watching this if you want to know what it's like in a psych ward. I will probably upload another video um, on my next upload. Or maybe uh, next week. I don't know. But the next video for what it's like and his life board is definitely coming because I have a whole lot more to say. Probably more to describe in, uh, probably more to describe for more than three videos. So, yeah. This ends this video, but not the psych ward video. So, stay tuned for that. <laughs>